This is the all new BMC Team Machine, the Swiss brand's all round race bike. For 2021 and to celebrate its 10th anniversary, the bike gets a suite of updates that promise increased aerodynamics, increased stiffness, and a reduction in weight. It's 10 years since the first BMC team machine launched, and in the Swiss brand's short history, bear in mind that BMC was only founded in 1994, its flagship bike has seen more than its fair share of successes. At first glance, the bike honestly doesn't look that different to the outgoing model. But BMC boldly claims that every tube on this bike is different. No one is the same as the outgoing model. So the changes are subtle, but in line with wider industry trends. Now, forgive me if things briefly sound a little bit 2001 A Space Odyssey, but it does bear mentioning how BMC has designed this new bike. When BMC released the last generation of the team machine, it introduced a piece of design software, which is not only computer, but super computer based, called ACE. And this allowed BMC to analyze tube shapes, the aerodynamics, composite structures, all this sort of stuff in one unified package. This, BMC claims, allowed it to focus on optimizing set goals that were set out by the design team, and focused on stiffness, weight, and aerodynamics, all the usual stuff. However, with this new bike, BMC has upped its game and introduced a new piece of software called Ace Plus, which presumably they needed a super duper computer for. With this new piece of software, it was able to create virtual prototypes far quicker than the previous version of the software, allowing it to focus on the CFD models of the bike as well as the composite layup, resulting in the bike you see here. Now, all of this design work has obviously, and like I said, in line with wider industry trends, resulted in a bike which BMC claims is more aero than the outgoing model. Now, I'm not going to go into the nitty gritty detail of absolutely everything on this bike. I'm going to make for a very boring video, and you should head to bikeradar.com for the full news story, with a link to that in the video description if you want to learn more about the aero development of this bike. However, there are a few interesting details which absolutely bear mentioning. Now, before we crack on, if you're wondering why I'm quite as fashionable as I am, it is not entirely of my own doing. This wonderful swag is all thanks to our sponsor, Freewheel, and you can head to see more of their kit in the link in the video description. Now, in terms of aero highlights, BMC is a brand that is never afraid to name or otherwise acronymize something. And with this bike, BMC has applied its AeroCore design principles to this bike. What is the AeroCore design principle? I hear you scream. Well, BMC looks to things that you're going to add to a bike, in this case, bottle cages, and looks to see how they can improve the aero qualities of a bike rather than hamper them. So focusing on those bottle cages, which are included with the bike, you'll note that they have a very flush base, which sits really neatly on the down tube and seat tube of the bike. BMC claims that this flush fitting eliminates any drag that would occur between the bottle cage and the frame. It's notable that the cages are designed to work with bog standard round bottles. There's no weird aero bottles required to get the benefits here. It's the cage in question, which BMC has focused on for improving aero qualities. The bottle cages, which BMC is calling the aero cages, are made of carbon and they claim they're among the lightest you can get on the market. They're also claimed to work perfectly well on Pave having been cobble tested by its ambassadors with no bottles going awry. With that in mind, I've decided right now I'm going to copyright the phrase pave proof and any brand that dares use it, pay up. On to another acronym and we have the ICS cockpit or the integrated cable system cockpit. First introduced in 2016, the cockpit has been updated to go with the new team machine. BMC claims the idea behind the cockpit is, of course, to give you those lovely clean lines you get when you have a fully integrated front end, but also, of course, with that, you get an improvement in aerodynamics. Another thing I really like about this cockpit is that the hardware is totally replaceable, which is actually hidden as well at the back end of the stem of the cockpit. So if you're ham-fisted enough to round a bolt or cross-thread one of the nuts, you can actually replace that stuff. This isn't that common on integrated cockpits, and given how much I imagine this thing would cost to replace, that's a really good thing to see. All of these aerodynamic improvements add up to a claimed improvement of 6% less drag compared to the outgoing model, 
when tested at 45 kilometers an hour in a velodrome. Now, as always, whenever we quote these figures, take them with a pinch, if not a handful of salt. However, the number is low enough that it kind of feels believable. Now, it is notable that compared to something like the Trek Monda or the Cannondale Super 6, BMC has quoted those aero figures at a relatively high speed. And that's not a problem in itself, it's just a bit of a divergence from more wide industry trends, where they tended to quote figures for climbing speeds or lower speeds overall. Aero stuff aside, in terms of actual tangible things you can touch and feel, there are a few really cool updates which bear mentioning on the BMC. Now one thing, which is actually kind of boring, but if you are working on a bike, something you'll be very glad of, is apparently the mounting for the brake on the fork has been altered to give more adjustment. This was done following feedback from team mechanics as well as riders, and apparently makes it much easier to live with that fork. Now the eagle-eyed among you might have also noticed that on the dropouts, they've moved to a new stealth dropout system. This moves away from the more common two-piece design you see on a lot of other bikes and moves to an in-molded captive nut. What this adds up to is lower weight and a simpler system overall, and also does genuinely look very, very clean. This translates into a design which is BMC claims lower weight, has less parts, and honestly does genuinely look a lot cleaner. Tire clearance has also been increased to a bang on trend, 30 millimeters wide measured. We're always delighted to see this. It boosts the versatility of bikes like this. Thumbs up BMC. The position and size of the seat clamp has also been altered. And depending on the frame size, it'll be 10 to 15 millimeters lower than the previous bike. This means that the top tube is actually subtly more sloping than the previous model but it also means that slightly more seat post is exposed, which in theory should give a more compliant ride. Now the previous team machine was plenty stiff, but of course it's a new bike, so BMC is gonna claim that the new bike is a touch stiffer. Now the key area for this was around the bottom bracket, and BMC has totally taken the design of the bottom bracket shell and the down tube back to the drawing board. Compared to the older design, the overall width of the bottom bracket shell is much wider and its connection with the down tube is larger as a result. This creates a more fluid kind of join between the two and again is claimed to increase torsional stiffness. Now inside the head tube we have a fairly standard tapered headset but with that it is matched with a very much not traditional kind of rectangular shaped steerer tube. Again this improves the stiffness of the front end but it also gives a space for the internal cable routing to run down either side of the steerer. In BMC's testing it claims the rear end is 20% stiffer overall with a 4% overall increase in torsional stiffness. And in terms of vertical compliance, apparently there's a 2% increase there too. Now, of course, I'm not daft. This is all very, very marginal stuff. But, you know, compared to the more extravagant numbers which are bandied around in other launches, this actually feels quite believable. The real story here is that kind of aero integration and the overall shift towards a more all-round bike, which combines kind of lighter climbing qualities with more aero forming you're seeing on proper aero bikes. In terms of weight, BMC claims that for a 54 centimeter frame, the frame weighs 820 grams, with the fork coming in at 345 grams. This adds up to a net reduction of 40 grams compared to the old frame, which isn't drastic, but again, bears mentioning. Weight reduction extends beyond the frame alone, and the new dedicated seat post for this bike is claimed to weigh 10 grams less than the outgoing model. The cockpit is just 320 grams, and even the paint, the paint used on this very bike, is claimed to be lighter. No stone has been left unturned. All of this results in a claimed 9% reduction in complete bike weight. For context, this 56 centimeter test bike with those cages weighs 7.09 kilograms. Just like my wild lockdown hair, BMC's suite of acronyms grows at an abnormally fast rate. And joining ACE Plus, we have TCC, or the Tuned Compliance Concept. This concept was introduced with the very first team machine 10 years ago, and the most noticeable thing from that was the introduction of dropped seat stays. Now, if you've paid attention to bike launches in the last few years, you will note that dropped seat stays are a serious trend in road bikes, but there is no question that BMC really was one of the first, if not the first, to introduce this. 
Naturally, BMC claims that the new team machine is its most comfortable yet, with the layup giving the most comfortable ride possible. All the usual stuff. The new team machine range starts at £2,700 for a 105 equipped model, rising to a frankly outrageous £10,250 for the red ETAP AXS equipped bike. I can't believe I'm saying it, but I think that's the fifth bike this year where I've said the top end bike is over £10,000. How things change. Finally, and I can't believe I didn't mention this first, but it says a lot of how things have changed in recent years, the new team machine is only available with disc brakes. Now I've said this before, but people simply are not buying rim brake bikes anymore. That is of course a broad generalization, and if you're buying a rim brake bike, good for you. I still like them, but the matter of the fact is that brands will only want to make the bikes that people are actually gonna buy, and that's disc brake bikes. However, with all of that said, there will be one rim brake model available in certain territories where they are still popular, but this will be based on the previous generation of the team machine. So you're not gonna get all the good juicy stuff we've talked about with this new bike. How does the damn thing ride? Well, I would love to tell you, but this is a hot bike, hot property. We literally got it about four days ago and the pleasure of riding it has gone to my colleague Warren Roster, who has published a full first ride review on bikeradar.com. So if you want to learn more about how the thing rides, head there with a link in the video description. In the meantime, please leave all your thoughts about the bike and any questions in the comments. We do always look at them and we love seeing your feedback. Once again, thank you to our sponsors Freewheel for decking me out in such beautiful garments. And as always, don't forget to like, subscribe and click that little bell icon so every time we upload a video, you'll get a notification.